Hello guys, welcome to Learning with Prep Class. I am your tutor, Adindu. In this video, I'll be solving questions 29 to 31 from the 24th edition of the Google Sego Quantitative Questions. After this video, you will have gained understanding on how to carefully select the correct option when solving questions in quantitative. It's really fun having you guys around, and I know this video will be a worthwhile session. Do not forget to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. You can go the extra mile of leaving a comment so we can communicate for effective learning. Without further ado, let's zoom in. So these are the samples we'll be using in solving questions 29 to 31. For us to start, we'll need to build an understanding on how to get all of these answers. And once we've done that, that will serve as a guide in solving questions 29 to 31. I'm going to start by using a trial and error method to see if it works. If it does work, definitely it will be our method for solving the questions. So I'll start by saying 18 divided by 3 will give me 6. 6 plus 3 will give me 9. 9 times 3 will give me 27. That looks correct. And I, I can also say on the reverse, 27 minus 18 will give me 9, then square root of 9 is 3. So there are two ways to this, and our answer is still true. So for this, 8 divided by 2 will give me 4. 4 plus 2 will give me 6. 6 times 2 will give me 12. Or the reverse, 12 minus 8 will give me 4. Square root of 4 is equal to 2. All right. Let's try the third one. I would say 2 divided by 1 will give me 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. And 3 times 1 is equal to 3. I would say 3 minus 2 will give me 1. And the square root of 1 is equal to 1. All right. So this understanding will guide us through solving questions 29 to 31. Let's zoom in. All right, question 29, we've been asked to find this missing part. So let's see how to get it done. So since we don't know what here is, we're going to call it x because we don't know where it's, what it is and it's our middle number. It's related to both numbers. So we're going to call it x. So if we say x over 7 is going to give us an answer we don't know, so we'll call it y. So x over 7 equal to y. So since we don't know what they are, we are replacing them with alphabets, which we call variables in mathematics. So when we solve for these variables, definitely they will represent the values that ought to be there. So x over 7 equal to y. Then the next step is to say y plus 7 times 7 equal to 147. So definitely we are looking for y in this equation. So how do we detach all of these values from y to make y stand on its own. First, we are going to divide both sides by 7. So, this can stand on its own. So, if we divide both sides by 7, 7 over 7, 7 will cancel 7 here, 1 for 2 divided by 7 will give us 21. So, we'll be left with y plus 7 equal to 21. Next, we collect like terms. So, plus 7 will cross equality sign to become minus 7. And we'll have y equal to 21 minus 7 and y will be equal to 14. Or since we want to detach 7 from y, we can subtract my 7 from both sides. So if I say y plus 7 minus 7 equal to 21 minus 7, 7 will cancel out 7 to give us y equal to 21 minus 7, which will give us y equal to 14. So since we found y equal to 14, let's remember x over 7 is equal to y. So we're going to replace it in this equation to get x. So x over 7 equal to y, where y is equal to 14. So it will be x over 7 equal to 14. So we'll cross multiply 14 times 7, x times 1. It should be 14 over 1, so it will be x times 1 because... 14 over 1 is the same thing as 14. So x will be equal to 14 times 7. And that will, that will give us x equal to 98. So 98 would be our answer here. 
So if we say 98 divided by 7 will give us 14. 14 plus 7 will give us 21. 21 times 7 will give us 147. Or we can do it on the reverse and say 147 minus 98 will give us 49. The square root of 49 is 7. So our answer is correct. X is equal to 98. Let's check out the answer. Question 29, option D, 98 is the correct answer. Let's look at the next question. Now, for this question, we've been asked to find this part. So we are going to use the reverse. We are going to use the reverse to find this part. Let's see how we did it. So it will be this minus this. The answer we get, we find the square root, and this will give us this. So 3 over 16 minus 1 over 8. To do this, we're going to find the LCM. The LCM of 16 and 8 is 16. So 16 divided by 16 will give us 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Minus 16 divided by 8 will give us 2. 2 times 1 is 2. So 3 minus 2 will give us 1 over 16. Next, we find the square root of 1 over 16. Square root of 1 over 16 will be equal to 1 over 4. Because square root of 1 is 1, square root of 16 is 16. Our answer is 1 over 4. So if we are to try it out the other way to see if it holds, so 1 over 8 divided by 1 over 4, this is division. And for this to operate, we we'll need to change it to multiplication, then flip it. So it will change to multiplication, then 4 over 1. 4 will cancel out 4 to give us 1. 4 here, 2. So we'll have equal to 1 over 2. So 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 times 1 over 4. So 1 over 2, we'll find the LCM of 2 and 4 to give us 4. 4 divided by 2 will give us 2 plus 4 divided by 4 will give us 1 times 1 over 4. So 2 plus 1 will give us 3 over 4 times 1 over 4, which will give us equal to 3 over 16. 3 times 1 is 3, 4 times 4 is 16. So 1 over 4 is actually our correct answer. Let's check it out. So question 30, option E, 1 over 4 is our correct answer. Let's move to the next question. Question 31. We've been asked to find this part, so we're going to use the actual process of solving it. Let's see how to get it done. So we'll say 0 0.5 over 0 0.5 equal to 1. Then 1 plus 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. So 1 plus 0 0.5 is 1.5 times 0 0.5 would give us 0 0.75. We would say 5 times 5 is 25. 5 carry 2. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 2, 7. 0 times 5 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. This is in one decimal place, one decimal place together, two decimal place from behind. So we're going to count it 1, 2. Then we'll put our decimal points here. So our answer will be 0 0.75. Let's check it out. Question 31, option C, 0 0.75 is our correct answer. All right. This is how much we can take in this video. I hope we had fun. I'm using this time out to ask us to join our WhatsApp group using the link below so we can get updates about more videos to come and we can ask questions and comment on the previous videos we've seen. It was fun having you guys around. Till I come your way again. Bye-bye.